trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. First of all, I think we should wish our good friend, Mr. Bill Meridian, a happy birthday. I believe it's number 78, Bill? 75. 75. Oh, sorry about that, my friend. Anyway, listen, thank you for joining us today and have a wonderful sure. birthday. Uh, tell us what you're looking at. You've got some great stuff and everybody's been waiting for it. So you have the mic and we have you for the next hour. So please continue. Can you see my screen right now? I hit, I hit share. In. I don't know what you can see. Coming in perfectly, Bill. The PowerPoint is up and running. Okay. Well. Oh, I like. I love that quote. A reasonable probability is the only certainty. I love that. <laughs> well, that's right. Um, it sure is. So, right now, the key question is: When will investors and markets react to, to the deteriorating underlying fundamentals? Excess credit creation is more than making up for the crumbling fundamentals. How long will this continue? When I say excess credit creation, if you pump enough money into the system, it's got to go somewhere. And it's spilling over into the stock market, the silver market, real estate, crypto, and everywhere. And it reminds me, of course, Larry, you remember the 70s. Oh, yeah. So, so that has been, I think, covering up for a lot of the underlying fundamental deterioration, which we'll look at um, in the next few slides. And uh, you remember the 70s, there's a 50 year cycle in which interest rates went well over double digits, equity markets fell, the economy suffered, investors sold stocks for less than they paid and the purchasing power of the remaining funds declined. So that was a real period of very real wealth destruction. Real estate went into a recession, forecasted by the 18-year real estate cycle, which is again at a high this year. And I note that this sector has fallen the most since the late July top. This trend is likely to continue. We have a weak Democratic leader, conflict with Iran. We've got chaos in the streets and on the campuses. So this is the 70s. That's the 50-year cycle. Now we'll look at the 90-year cycle, which would put us back in the 30s. And... Economic slowdown, higher rates, totalitarian leaders on the move, overregulation now, and the New Deal then. We have the Green New Deal and COVID now. So we had, um, you know, when I when I mentioned the cycle, people think of well, they, they think of communism in the 30s, and they think of uh, Nazism in the 30s, but they don't see the United States. They look upon the New Deal. And I'd like to point out there's a book called New Deal or Raw Deal. And if you go to the Ludwig von Mises Center website, they've got plenty of information on how the – essentially the New Deal created the Great Depression. World War II ended the Depression, and that's why the economy grew again. Or World War II ended the New Deal, which ended the Depression, because there were wage and price controls, which they don't tell you about. There were controls on everything enforced by the military. So that's a, a realistic look at the New Deal. And now we've got the Green New Deal. So this is a combination of the 70s and the 90s, 70s and the 30s, I should say. And this I had in the last show. And I apologize again for the poor quality, but it was photographed directly from Ray Dalio's book, which – uh, is about uh, civilization of cycles. It's too far away for me to read the title. Um, but anyway, that is it's a U creation. It's U.S. Uh, balance sheet percentage of GDP. Yeah, uh, I was trying to get you the title of the book from the bookshelf. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> this is this is the um, central bank balance sheet. In other words, the assets held by the Fed, uh, divided by GDP. And look at this. 
Now, all that credit has got to go somewhere. It's like if you have a leak in your home, the water runs all over the place. And or if you are burning incense, the fumes go everywhere. All of that credit's got to go somewhere. And it is going somewhere. And last time I showed you, was it the Mickey Mantle baseball card that went for millions? I can't remember anymore. Seven million dollars for a 1950 yeah, okay. Mickey Mantle's rookie card. Yeah. Okay. I bid six that. and a half million and was outbid. Uh, and you got you got outbid. <laughs> well, here's another one: a lost John Lennon guitar is up for auction next month. A 12-string Hootenanny used in the film Help. Finding this remarkable instrument is like finding a lost Rembrandt or Picasso, and it still looks and plays like a dream after having been preserved in an attic for more than 50 years, say the auctioneers. Expected to make 600000 but one sold for $2.4 million in 2015, so six, $600K is probably an underestimate. Now, people, people have enough money to spend $600,000 on a guitar, whether it belonged to John Lennon and it was, it was in the movie Help or not. So, wow. you know, and as I always like to say, in the 70s and 80s when I lived in New York, the saying was, cocaine is nature's way of telling you you have too much money. And this is the economy's <laughs> way of telling you that there's too much money in the economy when you can afford to pay millions for baseball cards and things like that. And too much money leads to crises. Here's the delinquency rate for multifamily housing. And you see the bottom, and then you see uh, 20. 20 to 22 pullback, and now you see, well, what you might call the wave three if you can apply Elliott wave to this. But right now, the del delinquency rate for multifamily housing is now in excess of the last peak, which is back around 2011, 2012. So this is what's going on under the surface, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And here's the credit card charge, charge off percent from Discover Financial. Credit card defaults, and here we go, 2022, straight up to 2024. So you've got delinquency rates for multifamily housing. Here's credit card debt. And in the third one, here's the excess household savings are almost gone. Cumulative excess savings going straight down to 2021. U.S. nominal on the top graph, U.S. nominal personal savings pre-pandemic trend straight down. So people are running out of money. It's you know no matter how much money you inject into the economy, it's not going. It goes into the hands of people who uh, are using it to speculate. It's not going to the hands of the average person. A classic monetary bubble. Now to get to the markets, that is from let's see 1928. The S&P 500 monthly histogram, the red bar, is the odds that the market is going to – you could see December best. The odds that the market is going to go up that month, that's 73 percent, most bullish month of the year. The blue bar is red over here. That is the average rise. No, that can't be the average rise. Wait a minute. Uh, this we got we got to pay we got to pay a few bills, Bill. Let's uh, let's take a moment, and we'll be right back with Bill Meridian on his birthday, number seventy-five. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, Education investors. 
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Bill Meridian out of uh, Vienna, Austria. Yes. Fire away, my friend. These great charts. I love to see those credit things. I never look at those kind of things, but boy, it sure tells a picture, in my opinion. Well, uh, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, you know, I don't see other people looking at this, or if they do look at this, um, people don't have a response for it. You know, like if you watch the business news or or read the media and. Um, you know, they tend to focus on earnings and they tend to focus on stocks or in uptrends. I mean, but, you know, they're mm -hmm. they're reaching very stratospheric levels. They're going straight up like skyrockets. And this is the average tendency of the S&P. And again, the red bar is the odds of the market going up that month, which for December is 73 percent. The uh, blue line is the average the average percentage the market changed so that would be about 1.27 percent and the green line is the expected return in other words the product the probability that it's up which is about 73 percent times about well 1.3 percent gives you the green line down here which is over here which is about 0.8 percent so right now where are we we are in April, which is usually a strong month, but hasn't certainly has not been, and we'll, we'll address that in a minute. May doesn't get any better, and June looks pretty good here, but it, it's usually the second weakest month next to September, which, of course, as we all know, uh, goes down most of the time. Here's the average Dow Jones Industrial Average May performance. This is based on 1885, all months regardless, up 56% of the time for an average change of 0.14%. That's not too exciting. That's 14 basis points. In an election year, it's up 52.9% of the time for an average change of 0.66%. Year ending in a 4, 46.1% up for an average loss of 1.18%. Not exciting numbers to start out with. So, and here, here's a very long term view. This is the market cap of the largest stock relative to the 75th percentile stock. In other words, the total market capitalization, which of course is the share price times the number of shares, relative to the 75th percentile stock, which is about three quarters of the way down. And here's 2023 and there's 1932. So 
it can get pretty high. And in fact, there are articles in the Financial Analyst Journal which show that all bull markets are based around a small handful of stocks. You either own those stocks or you're going to lag for the entire bull market. But when it reaches an extreme, like you can see the extremes, 32, 39, 64, 73, 2000, 2009, 2020, 2023. So this, as I said, that's the way all bull markets are. But if it, uh, oops, sorry, I just hit the uh, mouse. But this is nosebleed levels. This is higher than since uh, 1930 or so. So uh – -huh. And, yeah. and sent, sentiment is getting too bullish. This is macro hedge funds exposure to U.S. equities. Now, sentiment, there's different types. There are polls like the AAII poll or the uh, sentiment polls where they call up people or they call up analysts, market letter writers. Are you bullish or you bearish? Well, if you're wrong, you really don't suffer any great loss except a bruise to your ego. But – this is macro hedge funds exposure to U.S. equities. This is based on real money. I find that these real money sentiment indicators are much better because it's real money. And so you'll note that that point, this is the exposure to U.S. equities is now higher than any point on this graph. And this graph runs back to 2010. So again, you have um, – this graph very stretched to the upside. You have the sentiment very stretched to the upside. And now here's the earnings view. This is the positive earnings revisions for the magnif magnificent seven stocks and negative re revisions for the S&P 493 and the s and S&P. These are the earnings revisions for the seven biggest stocks. That's the rest of the S&P. That's the total wow. S&P 500. Holy, holy cow. So this is, this is telling you. Let me go back here. This is telling you that there's a great deal of confidence to where it says 2023, that that is going to stay up there or go higher. I kind of doubt it. Now, here is the S&P monthly cycle. And in my last visit with you, I didn't put enough uh, emphasis on this. But you'll notice I met with you back somewhere around here. And you'll see the cycle declining. Well, I've got a projected turning point tomorrow, the 26th. And this cycle bottom, so I imagine we're at least going to get a relief rally. And uh, it bounces up here. That's one cycle. This is based upon the latest data, my software, which uses the classic sine wave analysis. But I do a lot of special things. I've corrected some of the problems in the earlier sine wave analysis. But it showed that April was going to go down. And I'd like to go into how I played this. I thought, I, I thought the resolution – of all the positives that I saw in this downturning cycle would be a 2% decline into the 15th of April or the 18th of April. And when it got to be more than that in the third, I hit the, uh, hit the um, emergency button. And I started to sell off and capture profits in stocks like uh, NVIDIA, uh, Meta, which is getting clobbered today. And I started uh, and I increased my allocation to energy stocks. I also bought some inverse funds like um, – SDS and QID, which move twice the rate of the underlying S&P and NASDAQ. For every 1%, the indices drop, these funds rise by 2%. So just the same, it really uh, cut a lot of, I expected, again, 2%, and the market was down about 5 uh, after three weeks. So that has caused me to alter my view. And look at this and say, what are the cycles can, can I uh, take into consideration here? And this is the cycle summary 2024. I'll explain it again. You may have some new listeners. The one-year cycle is the average cycle for the year. In other words, the market uh, usually tops in here around January. The trends here pops up in April, down into June. June is usually bearish. And you'll see September is very bearish. And then you get the fourth quarter rally. The four-year cycle is the election year cycle, what is called the election year cycle. I'll get back to that in a minute. And then the 10-year cycle is the 10-year cycle developed by Edgar Lawrence Smith of Ameritrust Bank way back in the 30s. The four-year cycle is attributed to the elections, but the four-year cycle existed before the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913, because people usually think that the Fed juices the economy up to make the incumbent look good. But it exists, as my late friend Ian Notley points out, in countries where there's a four-year election cycle, a six-year election cycle, or no elections whatsoever. 
and it existed prior to 1913. So there's a four-year cycle, whatever the cause is. Ten-year cycle. Years ending in five have usually always been up. Years ending in zero are the worst. They're most bearish. Um, years ending in seven usually bring some sort of a crisis. So next year, we have a year ending in five, which is the most bullish in this 10-year cycle. But we have the year after the election, which is usually the most bearish. So you've got one very bullish and one very bearish at extremes. So I don't think next year next year will be pretty long. Let's take a break here. We're going to talk to Mr. Bill Meridian in just a minute. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. This portion of Trade What You See is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Please continue, my friend. Yeah, so we were looking at the 1-4 in the 10-year cycle. And I had explained the four-year cycle and the 10 
And let me just say the one-year cycle, it uh, is obviously derived from a calendar. They invited me to speak at MIT twice, if you can believe that. I said, what am I going to tell them? And I said, how many people here believe there's a seasonal cycle in the stock market? It goes up in the spring, tops in the summer, it's very weak in September, big Q4 rally. And almost everybody raised their hands. And then I said, how do you, how do you know where you are in the cycle? And I, you look at a calendar. And how is a calendar derived? Well, it's the relative position of the Earth and the Sun. So it's a solar or an Earth cycle. Now, at this point, about three quarters of the people who acknowledge that they look at this cycle started to look very sour. And um, <laughs> I explained to them, I said, so you're looking at, uh, you're looking at a, a planetary cycle. And this was my uh, discussion with Arthur Merrill way back in the late 60s, early 70s. It was Arthur had done a little bit of work like this. And I said, what about a Mars cycle, a Jupiter cycle? And that's how I got started looking at planets. And if you're interested, I just uh, – there is a, a paper called SAD, SAD, which is Seasonal Attentive Disorder, in which the PhDs in the Financial Analyst Journal attempt to explain this by saying that there's a seasonal tendency for people to get – whatever, anxiety, and they relate it to other things that go on, you know, I guess admissions into um, admissions into emergency rooms, things like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the, um, and we're, I'm discussing this right now with uh, Dr. Richard Smith, the uh, head of the Foundation for the Study of Cycles, as to why cycles work. Uh, John Nelson, I'm sure you remember that name, Larry, back in 1948 or 49, RCA put him on the roof of a building in lower Manhattan, to try to determine why shortwave radio transmissions were disrupted. And he concluded it was from activity on the sun. And that's what they had thought. They noticed during these big eruptions, which, you know, the announcements come out of the observatories, is there a way to predict that? So John looked at the inner planets with his telescope and made a lot of diagrams. He got no results. He was thinking gravitational pull does it. He didn't get any results until he extended his search out to Pluto. And he used heliocentric planetary positions, and he used configurations. The name of the book is uh, – where's the name of the book? And I've forgotten. It's sitting right in my bookshelf. Uh, I'll get it before we uh, – yeah, next commercial. Uh, Cosmic Patterns by John Nelson. He lived in New Jersey. I met him at several meetings. The uh, planets affect the sun. The sun affects the magnetic field of the Earth. And in all of our brains is a substance called serotonin, which I first read about in 1972 or four. And I asked Dr. John Paracos, the renowned psychoanalyst, and he said, we don't know what it's about yet, but we think it's very important. Well, today, all the biotech companies work on serotonin. It is very important. It's a regulator for the body. Mm -hmm. It is the substance in the, pigeon, in the brains of homing pigeons that enable them to home in to their targets because it sensitizes their brains to the magnetic fields of the Earth. So that's my explanation of these cycles. So this is – now the, the blue line at the bottom is the summary of the top three cycles. And here is Q2, which is where we are. And you'll note, whereas that other cycle topped over here in late March, this one topped around the middle – of April, and this is what I was waiting for to see if this was going to have any effect or not. Now, now I can see that it does. Well, this is actually down until May, you know, let's say last week in May, it bounces up down again. So, if you put it all together, what's the maximum risk here? I would say the market could decline on uh, right through the second quarter, a huge second quarter correction with the bull market still intact. Now, right in here, okay, just want to make sure I know where I am here. Late May, early June. This is, gets a little complicated. There's a planetary cluster. What is that? It's from the book, Tables of Planetary Phenomena by Neil Mickelson, whom I'm sure you remember. Oh, and yeah, very much so. San Diego, California. That's right. They're defined by five planets within a 20-degree span. They're all listed in his book. They are conjunctions with a wide orb. A conjunction is two planets within 10 degrees or less. These tend to cause market tops. And Arch Crawford and I both noticed this early on. And uh, there was a planetary cluster, PC, on August 25, 1987, that Arch Crawford spotted that led him to his accurate prediction of a Dow Jones high in that day. I remember it distinctly because Bob Prechter and I both disagreed with him. There were no planetary clusters in 2023, but this year they occur February 7, 9, May 9, 10, 
But the big one is May 26, June 4, and June 4 to 7. So from May 26 straight through to June 7, we are having a planetary cluster, which is a specialized type of conjunction. The reason this is happening is because Jupiter and Uranus are together in space, and they'll stay there for a while. Then the slower, the faster planets, the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, catch up, and they turn it from a two-planet conjunction into five. And so where is it occurring? It's occurring right in this time period, right here. Wow. And June, is June is usually weak. So to me, this is going to be a trigger, and you'll know it when we get to late May, May 26 or so, if the market starts to weaken, if it looks overboard, if you're getting sell signals, June has been the second weakest month. Thus, the late May, early Ju June PCs are most likely to lead to a top. And Bill, here we are, of course. Yeah. But if you had five planets coming together, that's what we had on the harmonic convergence, August 25th of 1987, which was the high of the market. Yeah, I just said that, yeah. Oh, I, I didn't Archie. realize you just said that. You know, also, the, the fellow that uh, died that day was uh, the uh, the gentleman that, oh, gosh, darn, I can't remember. He was the, uh, oh, gosh, you know who he was. He, I hate to bring this up, uh, but he was the only gay person on Wall Street. He used to come on Wall, Luke Kaiser all the time, had really colorful George clothes. Lindsay. George Lindsay, that's the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice fellow, too. Uh, George yeah. Lindsay lived two blocks from me. We used to go out for coffee. I, all the time. Yeah, I lived on, I, I, you lived yeah, on yeah, Christopher yeah. Street. I lived on Waverly Place. Yeah. Wow, very good. Yeah. And anyway, you know, this is does not include today, but right here, this may be one one day old. It hit the thirty eight point two percent retracement of this, and of course, as we know from my old friend um, um, Tony in um, London, Plummer, in Tony Plummer, Tony Plummer. Yep. If it breaks through the 38.2%, that means there's been a change in fundamentals. But I think we, a better way to state it is a change in the perception of the fundamentals. So we got right up to 38.2% 24 hours ago, and look what happened today. So it can't even get through. So that, to me, is a bearish signal. And um, this dotted red line is Joe DiNapoli's key of the day indicator, which now that the mystery has worn off um, – <laughs> And we know it wasn't uh, it wasn't derived from an inscription on the side of the Great Pyramid at Giza during the summer solstice. It's a three <laughs> by three moving average, which we'll explain when we come back. We'll be right back, folks. Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. 
Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, folks, we're back with Bill Meridian Cycles Research. Please continue, Bill. Okay, here's the 38.2%. I blew that chart up a bit. It hit that yesterday. According to Tony Plummer and uh, Technical Lore, if this is a genuine uh, rally, it should exceed that and stay above it. It has not. It immediately croaked. So that's bearish. Advances divided by declines. You can see the ratio peaked back in November and again in December. It's not, not very positive. NASDAQ, new highs, new lows. Well, look at the look where the new lows are. Um, it's um, highs, less lows. It's not a ratio like the previous one. So that tells mm -hmm. you less and less stocks have been participating, which you could probably guess from the Magnificent Seven. Ten-day moving average of breadth and the AD line. So this is the ten-day moving average of breadth. And you could see it got oversold, and yet the market declined anyway. If sentiment indicators become bearish and the market keeps declining, that means the bears are correct. They're in the majority. Uh, you have to remember, Paul McRae Montgomery used to talk about this as far as sentiment indicators go. And here are the sectors. This is the relative strength screen that I run. So communication services is up at the top. And the one I wanted to point out is energy because I noticed it gaining. So I've added energy stocks while cutting out technology stocks, which have fallen down here to the middle of the pack. And I do not expect – well, if real estate's at a peak, I wouldn't buy real estate. And mm – -hmm. Consumer staples, I wouldn't buy either. There were a lot of food stocks in there that can't pass increased costs uh, to consumers. So I don't know if this will change very much in the, going forward. And now here are the strongest stocks in the NASDAQ ranked in two categories. Seasonal rank, AVGO is Broadcom. It is the number one ranked stock in the month of May of the NASDAQ 100. In other words, it usually performs the best. In current relative strength, it's number 11. NVIDIA is number one for relative strength, but number 14 for seasonality. And here we divide by two and just rank them all. And um, let's go here to sec Oops. To the other end, weak stocks. So I'm looking at these for shorts. Uh, Sirius, that is Walgreen Boots, which is in a lot of fun fundamental trouble. ODFL is Old Dominion Freight Line. I used to follow trucking stocks on Wall Street. Uh, Autodesk, which I sold, Intel, which I sold, Starbucks, Monster, I'm bearish in all these. Apple, I've been bearish since January when the relative strength started to drop. And people are not gambling it right now, I guess, so wins is on this list also. If you're looking for short ideas, I would go here. It works best, however, with the S&P 500. Here you see the top stocks. Uh, Progressive is an insurance company. You see Wells Fargo. Micron Technology, Cintas, which leases, um, they don't lease, uh, they rent uniforms out, AXP, which is American Express, RCL, Royal Cruise Lines. So it's a real mix up at the top. But the short stocks, now Peak is a, an energy stock. Again, the Walgreen Boots is here. I forget what GL is, but here we have Old Dominion Freight Line again. Uh, Pfizer, we have uh, Autodesk, Schlumberger, Intel. 
uh, J.B. Hunt, which I'm already short. I've been short it for about three weeks now. So now let's switch over to bonds. And here you see the annual cycle of the bonds. Same, this is over 41 or 42 years. Right now we are here in May. Remember the third week of June, like the third week of March, the third week of September, and the third week of December are very bearish. So I, I think we're in a much longer term interest rate rising environment. So I would not be buying bonds. I'd only short them on any rallies. Mm -hmm. So here's the 10-year note activity in the month of May. This is the same type of graph. Here it's monthly, here it's daily for the month of May. And as you can see, there's uh, from early May through to about the 18th, the market is usually down. You then have a, a big rally around the 20th and another decline into the 27th. So that's the basic picture for May. Now, expectations for lower short-term rates. Look at that. That's the highest level since 2001 where the graph begins so that is a sentiment indicator saying that people are very very um how do we say it they are bearish on rates which means they're bullish on bonds and that's at a real extreme so mm -hmm. and effect of the jupiter uranus conjunction which was last week on notes from 1983 well the conjunction was right here, April 20th, and as you can see, it contributes negatively to the notes since 1983. Now, oil, uh -huh. I own, I started buying energy stocks because, look at this seasonality. This is pretty, I mean, Jeez. even in May, it's, uh, it's very, very cyclical. Nothing will save oil back here. I've tested out all sorts of different, you know, what percentage of time. Is it up in August, September? But it's always down in October and November. It's like the... Um, Bermuda Triangle for oil. So here's the May oil price behavior. May has been the second strongest month to own oil, up 49% of the time for an average gain of 2.4%. So the percentage up is small, but the average gain is high. So when it rallies, it really rallies. And you can see most of these days in May have a positive expected return. And that's the average right there. So I'm currently long oil. Here's the oil sentiment. A high ratio is overly bullish sentiment on oil. And you should start looking for a top, a, uh, a high ratio. Wait a minute. A low ratio that should read. Oop, mistake, mistake. Low ratio, overly bearish sentiment on oil. And what this is, if you look up in the upper left-hand corner, that is the UCO exchange traded fund divided by the USO exchange traded fund. The UCO is leveraged. It's two for one. And the USO is one for one. So if I said, Larry... Uh, I think we should buy oil, and you agree with me. And if we looked at this, if we were up here, uh, we would probably say, well, the sentiment is too its too great. We're going to buy the USO. We're going to buy the one times. We want to allocate the oil, but uh, it's a little too frothy for me right here, whereas down here, you would want to do what? If you buy the UCO, the UCO returns twice the percentage wow. change in oil. So if you divide one ETF by the other, uh, it, it gets you a pretty good sentiment measure. Is this up at an extreme yet? No, it's rising, but it's not at an extreme. So I think the oil sentiment is quite restrained. And here is, here is from my software, that is the oil cycle. And you'll notice it bottoms uh, right here. It's either today or tomorrow. I already bought it. Um, but it rallies up into May 15th or so. So let's see, where's May 15th here? Here's May 15th, which is the rising part of the cycle. So I think the dynamic weekly cycle agrees with the seasonal cycle. That's why I'm long it. And here is daily oil. Note it came down to this GAN rate of change line, which is also a Fibonacci retracement level, and it bounced straight up, and it never really broke through those two retracement levels on a closing basis. It did it on an intraday basis. Mm -hmm. So that's oil. Now here's the XLE, which is the energy stocks, which are a bit different. Yes, they did. I pointed this out on your show. I said it was going to break through here, which it did. The momentum is not overbought. In fact, it's just turning up a little bit. And you could see it better weekly here. But the relative strength really isn't too great versus the S&P 500. And now this is the blow up. This is I've shown, now last time I was on, I think the sentiment, the, I mean, the momentum was here. Now it's risen. That's monthly. And we'll go sell something to somebody. We'll be right back with Bill Meridian Cycles Research, folks.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. TFNN has launched The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we're back with Bill Meridian. Bill, tell the folks how they can reach you. Oh, just uh, go to BillMeridian.com or uh, Bill at CyclesResearch.com. That's the email. And uh, let me just point out, this is the XLE Energy ETF, which is the stocks. And there's the breakout. You can see it much better. But note that the relative strength isn't that great. And here you have monthly, I blew this one up. Here the relative strength broke the downtrend line that had been in existence for about seven years and trended up. And here you've got you know, neutral momentum, and it looks like it's turning up again. And there you have a breakout over that trend line. So it reminds me of the 70s, where energy was the only place to be. Mm -hmm. And this, however, is the scent, is the um, seasonality. April's the strongest month. We're moving into May, so it really doesn't get much of a boost from seasonality in here. But uh, I own Exxon and SM Energy, which used to be St. Mary's and the XLE. So gold, I pointed this out last time that central banks are building gold positions at the fastest pace in at least a half century. And I also pointed out on your show that during hard times, people who live overseas, I've been overseas for 34 years, they want to go to the U.S. They regard it as very stable. So they have to convert their local currencies into dollars. So you get a higher dollar, higher gold, and higher cryptocurrency. It looks like people are fleeing the financial situation, trying to park their money somewhere that's safe. So that's the reason they're all rallying together, or they were anyway. So price, my objective was 2450 
And that objective was reached from here. It broke out of that rectangle, and according to technical lore, then the price should match this, uh, This I think it's about $300. And from here, it carried up to about $2,400, $2,450. And you'll note, it's not overbought yet, and that's the relative strength versus the commodity index. So it has wow. more to go, but are we finished? Yes, we are, buddy. Thank you. Great show. Happy birthday. Have a wonderful birthday, okay? Okay. You bet. Bill Meridian, folks, Cycles Research. We'll start the tunes for happy birthday to you after he's off the air. See you all tomorrow, folks. May God bless. Bye.